Hi there everybody, um, this is Ismail with another video and today I'm going to discuss uh, a little bit more about online instruction when it comes to the arts. Uh, it's important to understand that uh, your job as a visual artist and not only in the visual arts, I'd like to also address theater, dance and music, we're vital to uh, the humanities and in terms of it's, it's the world is not full of just math and science right the world is full of art literature poetry language you know all of these have connections and all of them are vital and I think in the time that um, we're going through right now with COVID-19 and we are under a pandemic and you should be home and washing your hands every periodically, of course, and keeping yourself as safe as possible. Uh, that you could also think about what are the best ways I can engage my students online. And in what way, and also you're not doing just that, but you're also showing your, uh, how important you are as, as, uh, as someone involved in the arts who teaches in your school, right? So not just a visual artist, but uh, the dance instructor, the, the music teacher, the, um, the theater teacher and all those things. So uh, we are important and the best way we can uh, let them know that we're important in terms of that is to be able to have a real strong presence online. Okay, so in my school we're using Google Classroom and um, and it's a great platform for in terms of not only getting students in a classroom online but also having good instruction that will cover all the things that they need so of course I'm going to talk about the visual arts since that's my specialty so I made a couple of notes of things that I really wanted to talk about um, that I think are important um, one of the most important things, of course, is uh, you're a role model to your students. Uh, it doesn't even matter what discipline you're in, you know, as far as, you know, w what you teach. Uh, it's important that you maintain that role, okay? So please follow state and city policies, uh, of course, whatever uh, your school is doing in terms of safety right uh, your own safety your own family safety of course in terms of this uh, pandemic at this time so um, it's important that <clears throat> you let the students know that you too are, are doing what's required of you right to not only stay safe but to keep others safe okay so I think that's important um, let students know through your messaging if it's email or, or, or calls at home that you know you're concerned about them, that you really do care about their safety and, and that you hope that they're doing well. And I think a kind word, kind gesture in any form is always a good thing, okay? We're all humans and we're all going through this together, so it's important to let the kids know, okay? And let the parents know that you do care um, because you don't know what they're going through and you know there may be some difficulties that are very serious in this uh, particular pandemic that we're going through. Things are happening that are very sad and difficult to deal with, you know. So uh, try to be sensitive to all those things, okay, as you communicate to your kids via your lessons or whatever, okay. So uh, the next thing is, I think, which is the most important thing, is develop lessons, art lessons, that are usable and easy to do at home. Now, what, what I mean by that is make lessons that really allow students to use their home as a classroom, okay? So right now they're not going to a regular school setting, right? So you're not able to give them the supplies they need for a particular project or whatever, right? So most likely uh, you have to work with what you have so whatever the student has at home is what they're going to work with 
So try to do lessons that will deal with, let's say, uh, I did a wonderful lesson um, that I really enjoyed personally, which um, I learned from another artist uh, called uh, Sketch Collage, right? And I've mentioned Sketch Collages before. And what basically that is, is just you're drawing different objects that you see that are around you, right? And you're putting them in one uh, sheet of paper, drawing paper, and you know, you're kind of trying to create a sense of where you are, right? So that's a wonderful lesson in the sense that they could draw the things that are around them, right? So let's say they're having breakfast, they could draw their breakfast, right? They could draw, let's say their pet, their pet is walking by, they could draw their pet, uh, uh, they could draw ornaments, anything that's around them uh, in their vicinity, right? So that's a great little project, and then, then give them options in terms of what medium, right? And so I show them examples. I did it in pencil. I've done it in ink. Um, and show them different ways of doing it. So if they don't, let's say, have watercolor, chances are they're not going to be able to submit a watercolor project to you. But... <clears throat> If they have another medium, maybe they have colored pencils at home or crayons or just pencils, right, graphite. Uh, give them options that way because I think the important thing is not so much to grade them on the medium, grade them on the work itself, right? So whatever they're drawing, whatever they're making, uh, with what they have, grade them on that and not necessarily, oh, they don't have watercolor, so I'm going to take 10 points off their grade. Uh, it's not fair, right? And um, most, you know, remember that you usually supply these things in your classroom. Uh, they're not in a setting necessarily that is similar, of course, because they are at home. So uh, be cognizant of those things and, and be considerate that your students may have materials, may not have materials. So uh, and make your lessons kind of work with what where they are right uh, what setting they're in okay that's really important um, be aware that um, be flexible I'm sorry be flexible in terms of how your projects go uh, I've had kids that you know I taught a particular lesson on uh, optical art you know, I had kids kind of sent me, even though they didn't follow my PowerPoint necessarily, <laughs> and I, even though I did video demos, which I downloaded into my class, they didn't really, some, not, not all of them, but some kids didn't, uh, were, they were somewhere else mentally. Uh, I still grade them, you know, but I always tell them, well, you still need to follow the PowerPoint lessons. You still need to uh, uh, look at the video so that the video can show you how you can do it, right? Uh, so I, I, you always have to be cognizant of that again, of the fact again, that you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what is going on at home. You know, the stress of being home all the time. You know, what their parents are going through, you know. Uh, someone may be ill, and that could be a possibility in their home. So you have to be cognizant of the fact that even if the kids are not necessarily completely focused on the project uh, and they give you something a little bit off than what you are requiring, uh, be flexible with that. Um, now, you don't always have to be completely flexible in terms of that. You have a particular assignment, it has to be done in a certain way. But realize that these are not normal circumstances. And that's the thing that's important to understand. These are not normal circumstances. So just like you're learning <laughs> how to be a teacher online and connect with the kids uh, via, you know, via, basically via technology, your students are also adapting to this change. And, it, it, and it's harder for kids, you know. Kids still want to go outside, have fun. They're still thinking, oh, I'll go to school. They don't, you know, a lot of children don't understand the severity of what's going on. And it's not their fault. And that's really important to understand. This is not their fault. So 
be cognizant, be sensitive to these things because it will help you as you teach, you know, because um, I think it's, it's, it's important as an art teacher, especially the arts, I think. We have a great opportunity to allow students to express whatever they're going through. So if you can create lessons that allow them to find a way to kind of channel that energy in a very creative way that they don't even know that they're channeling all that energy out there, but they, they'll feel better about themselves, be very positive in everything that you're doing, of course, but, you know, give them lessons that are structured in that way, okay? So be thinking of those things, okay? So drawing lessons are wonderful when you're at home. Sketching lessons are wonderful, so just do things like that. You know, um, offer students also ways they can get supplies if they, if they really want to get them and if parents can afford them. There are simple ways of getting art supplies that are not expensive. For instance, I, I made a list in my Google Classroom and in a post where I listed the various online stores, including Amazon.com, Michaels.com, Blick.com, and maybe one or two others that where they can order, let's say, watercolor, charcoal, all those various mediums at a very cheap price, right? Of course, if there's a local 99 cent store where their parent can get some basic things, and you know, as far as the quality of the medium, you, you have to work with what you can get from kids, so don't be too, if their watercolors aren't, let's say, vibrant, right? Uh, don't grade them on that. You know, grade them on the work. Did they really, did they follow through with the assignment? Did they really, you know, because it's, uh, we're looking at technical things more or less, not the medium. And I think, at least that's my opinion. I'm not saying that this is what you got to do, but this is my opinion. I think that's, that gives them a, a sense of, okay, you know, I don't have charcoal, but I could do it in graphite. And if they do a good job in the graphite, there's no reason why not to give them a decent grade for that. Yeah, they don't have charcoal. Well, such is life, right? Uh, you have to work with what you have. So be flexible, be cognizant and, and sensitive of those type of things because teaching online is going to be challenging, and it is challenging uh, for many people, and uh, we want to be sensitive to what's going on, okay? All right, so make instruction also very clear, okay? Um, don't use a lot of heavy language. Like, I'll, I tend to use the word cognitive, right? And the kids don't always get that, but I always say cognitive, and then I will define cognitive. Like, I want you to be thinking about something, right? Uh, and I think the, the language is also really important in your lesson. So in my PowerPoints, I don't make my PowerPoints too complicated. Uh, the, one of the first things I do in my lesson is I will... Uh, introduce the lesson, you know, I always have a little kind of almost a disclaimer saying, you know, have fun with this. I know you're going through a difficult time, you know, uh, we're kind of trying to try new things, things like that. And then what I do right after that, I introduce the artist, uh, the subject and the artist. Uh, and usually I'll have m more than one artist depending on what we're doing. So, uh, and, you know, a brief paragraph on who the artist is, show them their work, go right into the lesson as far as what they're going to be doing. And then I break my PowerPoints in different parts. So let's say one, one lesson will, one activity, let's say, will have three assignments in them. So just, I just did a lesson where the kids are drawing flowers and plants and trees. I did it, in, you know, I break it where they start with flowers and basically flowers in a vase that they could find at home. Uh, pots 
uh, flowers or plants in pots which of course they could find those at home too many people have pots and plants and all that and of course trees so if they have a backyard or a front yard or if they end up you know if they take a walk to a park I tell them take some pictures of some trees things like that now you may be saying well what but Mr. Ray what if uh, they don't have any of those things at home I supply <laughs> references so I put in my PowerPoint references of, of pot of flowers in vases uh, flowers and pots, or plants and plots, and of course pictures of trees, all different types of trees. So you have to really think like this. You have to really think broadly like, okay, this is my lesson. This is what I would do if I was in a classroom, but since my kids are at home, I have to adapt that lesson, change it a bit, make it more of a home, you know, oriented to their home in terms of where they are, and then if by some chance they don't have what you're asking for, create another alternative. So either supply reference pictures, or you can make it as part of the assignment that they go online and find those things, right? And they could draw what they see. So you really have to stretch yourself to uh, accommodate your students because your students are... And not only your students, your parents too, because they're, they're going to be concerned as well. So uh, be really uh, on top of that as best you can, okay? So that means, you know, have a sheet of paper next to you when you're coming up with your lessons. Or if you have already have lessons that you're going to do, you may have to modify them. I have modified at least of, of the, let's say, out of... 15 lessons that I've done so far, uh, 15 or I would say 10 to 15, I don't want to exaggerate now, but right about there, I'm not really counting them. I think I've done overall like 12 different activities and each activity has three to four assignments. So uh, it's a lot of work obviously and I'm thinking now, I'm like, oh my God, I, have, I still have to come up with more. But what I'm saying is as you're coming with them, you're going to modify them for an online because what you teach in a classroom it will be very similar obviously right but now you have to adapt that lesson modify that lesson so that it can work online so that the student can read it and the parent and understand what the sequence of the lesson is and that's really important now I want to stress that they have to be able to follow that sequence, so they need to know what assignment one is, assignment two, assignment three. Some, uh, many times I'll put step one, step two, step three, step four, so that they can find, and I'll even put a stop sign, and I'll, tell, uh, and I'll put a caption on the bottom that says, uh, don't go any further unless you've done one, two, two, one, two, one, two and three, right, in terms of the assignment. So, those are things you have to really try to uh, be very uh, methodical, in a sense, about it, right? So you really need to have those things in your lesson. Um, stay in contact with your kids through email. I, I'm, students are always emailing me, um, so I'm emailing them back. Uh, if they have a question about a lesson, always be prepared, you know. Um, the one nice thing, and I think one of the things I like about online, is that kids can email me any time of the day. So it's not like a regular work day, you know, from 8 to 3 type of thing. Um, you are teaching online, so you are much more available. So I really don't, I, I, let's say I may not read my email after 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock because it gets... I have 300 kids, it's a lot of email, <laughs> not including their parents, right, um, asking me questions. So be thinking about those things and um, be aware that the challenges of teaching online are, they are what they are. Now I highly recommend it, I recommend, I highly recommend, sorry about that, uh, like I did in my last video, uh, that you 
videotape a demonstration of whatever project you are teaching. In all my lessons, I have a PowerPoint and I have a video. And in many cases, I have more than one video because I'll teach a lesson in parts, right? So I'll say video one, I do a, a particular project in pencil. Video two, I'll do it in marker. Video three, I'll do it, let's say, pastel or, or watercolor, right? So I give my students many options, but they can also see me do the project. Just like they would see me do a demonstration in the classroom, the videos are a lot longer than a regular demonstration because usually demonstration you don't want to be too long in the classroom setting, right? You want to do it where they can understand it, grab it, and then you want the kids to kind of get to work. But in a online, you want to make a video, you know, a video. My, some of my videos have been very short, let's say 10, 15 minutes. Others have been longer. Uh, almost an hour in terms of just showing a step-by-step -step of how to begin and how to end or finish a particular project, right? Sometimes I'll, I'll edit the video so that in one video I'll have three different segments of a particular project. To help, again, this is to help the student kind of understand, okay, this is the process of what I'm doing. So I, I don't give my students any real, uh, let's say, doubt on what the project is. They have a PowerPoint, they have video demo, right? Uh, if this particular project needs handouts, I will have handouts available in PDF that they can print right and they can follow with that so and then of course you know I have a, a, a kind of an intro uh, description of the lesson and I break it down um, prior to that right so they have all of that information they have video they have PowerPoint so my kids really have for every lesson they have everything they need to know to get that one or two or three assignments done, okay? So it's really important now, I, I, and, I, and believe me, I understand, it's a lot of work. It really is, you know, um, and, and you may be working harder than you would have in a classroom, but the benefits are overwhelming, and I think that's really important, that the benefits are overwhelming because if, as, once you hone your skills online, you really get good at it, where students are downloading beautiful, wonderful projects, then you kind of know, okay, <laughs> they're getting it, you know, they're, there's no excuses. Most of, and I give none of my kids really a lot of excuses that they can't do this project. When a kid tells me, Mr. A, I don't have watercolor, or Mr. A, I don't have paint, or Mr. A, I don't have colored pencils. My answer to that is, do you have a sheet of paper handy anywhere at home, and do you have a pencil? Guess what? You could do this project with a piece of paper and a pencil. That's how flexible you need to be, because remember, during this time, we don't know what specifically is going on with our students in terms of their home life. And we need to be as encouraging, as positive, and as caring as we can be as teachers, especially when I speak to my kind, visual arts teachers, to music teachers, or music teachers, theater teachers, you know, um, dancing teachers, we need to really be able to um, communicate our concern for our students, you know. Because to, to you got to remember, to many of them, when we were in the classroom to begin with, already looked to us as a way of finding their niche, you know, a lot of kids 
they communicate better through the arts, they may be struggling with other subjects. Uh, but if we can communicate online in a way that they could still continue developing their voice with whatever particular form of art you're teaching, you know, uh, that they can still, you know, connect with you. That's so important. And, and, and a lot of the kids, I have kids that email me almost every day, the same kids that email me every day. Why? You know, they want to know, am I doing it right? I need help or whatever. And, and sometimes it's just to communicate, you know. Sometimes it's just really communication, just saying hello, how you doing today? And guess what? That's, that's the same thing you would have done when you're in a regular school setting, right? So let's be there for our students the best we can. Um, I wish you all the best during this time. I really do to the visual arts teachers, to the dance teachers, to the music teachers, to the theater teachers out there in the world. You know, we're going to make it, we're going to make, we're going to get through this together. We are, we are. And I believe strongly with all my heart that the arts are even more important than ever at this time. And remember, uh, and I just want to mention one thing, you know, if you're a music teacher, or a dance teacher, or a theater teacher. Uh, those same concepts of doing videos, I think the idea of just visually having something that the kids can see uh, will also be, of course, I think a great, a great resource for them if you do videos as well, if you're not already doing them, of course. I think most of them are, are most most of those teachers I, that I know of are, but in case you're not and you're doing other things, I think that would be of valuable to them as well. So listen again, I wish you the best, uh, and I wish your students the very best, of course. So ho hopefully I'll have another video soon, and um, until then, you take care, you wash your hands, you keep doing art, you keep teaching art, and if you love videos like this, sponsor me on Patreon. Please share your comments below. Um, I'll put some resources in the descriptions below uh, of different resources and things like that to be, a, a, of course, of help to you as well. And um, I will see you in the next video. So you take care. Bye-bye.